Hi everyone. I'm working on a composition for viola and super collider in which the violist plays into a microphone and the live signal is processed in super collider. The violist also has a MIDI pedal on stage and when he or she presses it, super collider starts recording and the recorded audio is played back and manipulated later on in the piece. Also, this composition requires a human score follower who sits at the computer in the back of the hall or just out of sight somewhere and runs a series of cues as indicated in the score. I've also developed a graphical user interface that displays exactly what's happening in the piece as it's performed. I'm in the process of coding the cues, and I wanted to upload this video to demonstrate one way to easily control multiple parameters while updating the visual interface. So this patch I have runs a mock-up version of the viola part, uh, which I've saved as an audio file from the PDF score in Finale. I know there are some very impressive sounding sample libraries out there, but unfortunately I don't have any of them, and while the viola sound isn't terrible, it isn't great either. Uh, it'll hopefully sound a lot better with a live instrument, but anyway, for the purposes of this video, you'll get the effect. Uh, so I'll bring up the interface. And here it is. You can see that I've got uh, a ring modulator in the orange. Uh, the blue is low-pass filter, the comb filter in the yellow, and the red is a reverberator. Um, so the cues look something like this. Uh, first, I've just got all the presets. That sets all the sliders to the appropriate values so I can start running the cues. Uh, so I've got a series of small uh, routines, which I've called uh, Q01A, Right here, Q01B, and so forth. And in each of these cues, there's a do loop right here, which um, sets the value of the appropriate slider to the value of the number that's currently being passed into the loop. And you can see I'm using the value action method, which means that when the slider receives a value, it also performs the function associated with the slider. So if I scroll up to my sliders, for example, here's the reverb mix slider. Uh, you can see that each slider's function uh, here in the curly braces uh, calls a p def n, which is right here, uh, and that updates the appropriate pattern with new values for a particular argument. And this changes the sound being passed through the effects. You can see that I'm also using these global variables. For here, for example, is uh, reverb mix. And um, whenever the slider performs its function, it also updates these global variables. And this is really useful because I can keep uh, this global array of variables, and, and that's useful for uh, starting the piece somewhere in the middle or just simple debugging purposes. Uh, so back to the cues. You can see I've got five of these routines, Q1, A, B, C, D, and E. That's the last one. And I've put them in a parent routine called simply Q1 or 0, 01, uh, and it simply plays the smaller routines separated by wait times. So with a single line of code, you can alter the sound, update the interface, and update global variables. So uh, I'll start the viola part, which is loaded into a buffer, and when I run this line of code here at the bottom, you'll see and hear uh, the parameters change. So there you go. Uh, I'm going to get back to writing these cues, and hopefully I'll have more videos for you guys soon. See you later.